Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we are tackling project number two in my three-part gouache gardening illustration series. So what you see on screen is exactly what we'll be painting together. We're painting a mini herb garden that includes basil, thyme, and cilantro. The color palette is free as always. Just tap on the link in the video description and you can download and install it. We'll be using my paid gouache lovers brush set for all of the illustration and then my mono marker brush from my font lovers brush set and I'll leave links right in the video description to both of those brush sets but please feel free to use any brushes that you'd like. I'm going to start by creating a brand new canvas that's 1500 pixels by 1500 pixels at 300 dpi. I work in the display p3 color profile but if you're on an older iPad and don't have access to that then the default sRGB color profile is perfectly fine. I've got my brand new canvas and the first thing we're going to do is paint in the wood slats that are making up our planter box. So in order to do this, I like turning on the drawing guide. It just helps me keep my proportions correct. So I tap on the wrench, head to canvas, and then toggle on drawing guide. And the default drawing guide is totally fine right here. The color of the slats is going to be this light tan color. It's the second one in the second row. And I'm going to grab the thick round opaque brush from the gouache lever set. You can paint this anywhere on your screen and then we'll readjust but the first slat is going to be roughly two high by eight, eight squares wide. It's fine if you go out of the lines, just try and get as close to that as possible if you wanna paint in the same scale as me. And with this brush, you'll wanna paint the entire piece in one stroke, you don't wanna lift up your brush because when you put it back down, you're going to get a shadow. That's built into this brush for more painterly effects, but you may not always want the shadow. And when you don't want the shadow, you just wanna make sure you're painting in one stroke. If you leave a gap, you're just going to go to your smudge brush and then select the blender brush. I'm gonna reduce the size of this a bit and you can just push the color to close it off and then you don't have to worry about painting additional strokes. We have a second slat that we need to do. So I'm going to grab my brush and for this one, I'm just going to get really close to the edge and then paint the exact same thing, but I'm not going to touch the edge. You want a noticeable gap here and you'll see why in just a couple more steps. So I usually paint this bottom one just a little bit larger because we're going to hide it behind some grass. So I'm gonna go like two and a half on this one instead of the regular two. So once we have this, now we're going to add in the wood texture to our slats. I'm going to turn off the drawing guide. So that's looking good so far. I'm going to create a brand new layer right above this and I'm going to select this third color on the second row. It's just a little bit different, a little bit darker than the color that we just painted. And I'm going to switch to the liner brush. This liner brush is going to be fairly small. I'm coming down to 2%. And we're going to apply a clipping mask to this layer. So so tap on the layer thumbnail and choose clipping mask and now whatever we paint on this layer will be locked into the shape of whatever is on the layer beneath it. So for this wood grain kind of illustration look I'm just painting wavy lines and I'm not painting them too wavy just subtle and you could have some come off of other lines if you wanted to do that. So really really simple but when you zoom out, it's pretty cool how effective that is, and they're just wavy lines. So I'm not gonna go overboard, but I'm definitely gonna have a fair amount here. And you can see, because I have the clipping mask, I can paint right off of the shape and it won't show up. So you wanna make sure you do that in a few places so it doesn't look like they're all just staying within that first shape. Once you have your wood texture in there, on the same layer we're just going to put in some nails on the side so our planter box is stable. So I'm going to grab the brown color which is the first color in the second row. I'm going to keep my liner brush selected. I'm going to come up to about five percent and all you want to do is tap on your canvas once and that will give you these really cute little textured dots and these will be the nails that are holding our box together. Okay, and now we need to add some substance to our box so it looks like a box. So we're going to add in the same dark brown color that we use for the nails right between these two slats and it'll all come together and look like a real box then, which is pretty cool. It can be so simple and effective. So I'm going to create a brand new layer. I'm going to drag it underneath layer one and you can keep the liner brush selected if you want. I think I'm going to do that. I'm just going to up the size to 15%. And what you wanna do 
is start where the nails are and finish where the nails are. So there's going to be a little bit of a gap on both sides, but it's not going to be huge. And that will give us that sense of depth right here. Okay, and when we zoom out, you can see now it looks like it's a full stable box instead of just two pieces of wood that are floating in air. So now we have our planter box. So let's group our layers together for the sake of time. I didn't label these, um, but they're going to be all in the same group. So they'll be easy to discern. So I'm going to label this one planter box. I'm going to create a brand new layer. And the next thing we're going to do is paint in the herbs that are in our planter box, but all of the herbs are going to be inside and not on top of them. So we need to make sure all of our herbs are painted underneath the planter box group. We're going to start by painting the basil first. I grabbed some basil and some thyme from my own herb garden. My cilantro is struggling a little bit, so I apologize I don't have cilantro here right now, but you can look up a reference photo or you can paint it from memory. Um, so for the basil, I just wanna talk about it really quick before we paint it. So you can see the very top part has these little leaves and then the rest are pretty large and they just come right off of this main stem. And all of these leaves are kind of droopy looking. They're all kind of hanging downward. I've got another one right here. I'll show you too. So this is, they come off the stem in varied lengths segments and they've got quite a few leaves on each segment too. So you can see the sizes are a little bit different per segment. And then we've got really large ones that come off too. I'm, I apologize for the focus on this. I, I have it focused on the iPad so it can be a little hard to see, but I wanted you to get an idea of what the basil looks like. So that's what we're going to replicate here. And we're just making this a really, really simple illustration. This is not meant to be hyper-realistic. So, you know, we're just going to simplify this. So it's totally fine if it's not perfect. For the basil, I'm going to grab this first color on the bottom row. I'm going to grab my liner brush and we're going to draw the stems with it, but I'm gonna come down to about 2% for the stems and you can just draw up a few stems and then we can make stems off of this as we're painting our basil or even afterwards. So I wanna make sure they're not all the same height. I want some variation here. Maybe I'll put one right here. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to my thick round opaque brush and for this one, the size is kind of tiny, it's 4%. So I'm just going to paint in those little leaves up at the top and then I can make some larger leaves that are drooping off of it too. So this brush is pressure sensitive, so I'm going little pressure and then lots of pressure and kind of drooping them off. And you can draw new stems if you want coming off. So we'll just vary it up a little bit and then remember at the top of each one of these, we have some little leaves that are just starting and then some larger leaves as well. So make sure you get those in there. There's my little cluster of basil. It looks like I could use a couple more right there. Okay, so let's label this one basil. And now we're going to move on to our thyme. So I'm going to create a brand new layer, label this one thyme. And the color of this one is going to be the second color down at the bottom. I'm going to grab my liner brush again and keep this at 2%. And for the time, I've got some extra sprigs over here. You can see they're in little clusters and they're spaced pretty evenly apart. They get a little further apart as you get towards the bottom, but it's not a huge change and they're all just clustered together. It's really simple. So for this one with our liner brush, I'm just going to paint some sprigs up and keep in mind that when you look at the time over here, compared to the basil, the size difference. We wanna make sure we're respecting that. It's not going to be perfect, it's not going to be accurate, but we can at least show that the time is significantly smaller than the basil when we paint it. So just keep that in mind. And I'm going to keep the same brush, the liner brush. I'm just going to come up to 3%, so it's just a little bit thicker than the stem, and then just paint in that cluster. And I'm just kind of putting three or four lines and spacing them apart and trying to space them just a little bit further apart as I go down. And there's our time. And now I'm going to create a brand new layer, label this one cilantro. And once again, you can either paint from memory like I am going to do, or you can find a source image and base your drawing off of that. For the cilantro, the leaves are a little bit fanned out. So I'm going to make these just little scribbles and I'm going to change up 
the color too. So you can paint this nice and dense with your leaves if it's a nice healthy plant unlike mine currently. Uh, I'm going to grab the third color down at the bottom. I'm going to return to my liner brush. I'm going to change my brush to 2% and same thing. We're just going to draw a cluster right here. These ones are going to kind of all start from the middle and branch out from there. And I'm going to switch to my diluted paintbrush just to change things up a little bit and add a little texture. So for this one, they're just fanned out little leaves. I'm going to reduce the size of this down to 5% so I have a little bit more control. And just paint these sporadically. Okay, let's switch to the second color, which is the fourth one at the bottom. We've got our cilantro in here, and I'm noticing that my time is off center, so I can just grab that layer and move it over a little bit so it feels a little more centered between them. Okay, so now that we have our herbs, we can group all of these together and label it herbs. The next thing I'm going to do is paint in some grass around the box. So come up to the planner box group, create a brand new layer right above it. I'm going to label this one grass. I'm going to grab this fourth color at the end. If you already have it selected, if you use the same colors I did for the cilantro, then you will have it selected. I'm going to grab the thick round opaque brush for this and I'm just going to put in some sprigs of grass at the base of the box. And there's built-in color changing on this brush, so you don't need to change the color each time. I'm going to make this just a little thicker so I can move quicker. I'm up to 8%. So I'm just making sure that the bottom part of the box is covered so you don't see the line, the bottom line of the box. And then with the grass that's coming off to the sides, we're just going to taper it down. I'm going to turn on the drawing guide for this so I can keep this baseline and just kind of let it peter off there. Same thing on the other side. Okay, you can zoom out. Let's turn off the drawing guide and see if we need to change anything. The next thing we're going to do is paint in our little herb sign over here. So I'm going to create a brand new layer, label this one sign, and I'm going to drag it underneath the grass layer since it's behind the grass, and I'm going to grab my pink color. I'm going to use the liner brush. Let's increase the size up to 6%. And if you caught last week's tutorial, then you already know how to draw the sign. I'm just going to make a cute little pink sign right here that says herbs. Okay, and I can position it right where I want it to go. I just want to make sure that the bottom part is covered up by some grass. Looks like I drew it a little bit crooked. For the sign, the label on it, I'm still going to use the liner brush. I'm going to create a brand new layer and I'm going to grab this light color, the third one up at the top, and I've got the liner brush, reduce the size down to 2% and label it. We've got our herb sign in there, and then just to add a little bit of extra detail and a little more color to it, I'm going to add in some daisies, just really simple daisies. So I'm going to create a brand new layer and return to the grass color, which is the fourth one at the bottom. I've got my liner brush still selected. I'm going to keep it the small size, 2%, and let's draw some stems in. And you can do as few or as many of these as you would like. I'm going to make them go off in different directions. Let's paint in some leaves on them. I'm going to grab the Streaky Semi-Transparent brush, and this one's a pressure-sensitive brush, so it makes leaves really easy. You just start with little pressure and then lots of pressure and little pressure. So you can paint a bunch of leaves in really fast. Once you have all of your leaves in, now let's paint the daisies themselves. So we're going to paint the centers of the daisies first. So create a brand new layer. Grab the lightest yellow color down at the bottom. I'm going to grab the thick round opaque brush for this. And if you caught my tutorial a couple weeks ago with the messy gouache wildflowers, we painted some echinacea and I'm basically doing the exact same thing that I did there. So some of these, you're only going to see the petals down at the bottom and then other ones, the petals will surround it. And then once you have that, I'm going to switch to this gold color and we'll paint those petals in. So this is also a pressure sensitive brush. Let me reduce the size a little down to 6%. So I'm gonna go a little pressure and then lots of pressure. And that will give me some quick petals. So you get like 
instant flowers. Don't worry about if you see some pixelation right here. It's because we're zoomed up so close to it. Whenever you are concerned about pixelation, you always want to view your artwork at 100% of the size that it will either be printed or viewed at. Obviously, when you're zoomed in super close with a pixel-based program, you're always going to see pixels, but it's important to always view it at the scale that it will be seen at, which would be like the scale would be 100%. You can see the entire canvas on the screen. So if you can't notice the pixelation here, you're totally fine. So don't ever let that bother you. Okay, so we've got basically our whole thing done now. I'm going to group all of these layers together. So I'm going to label this one Herb Garden. And now the only thing we have left to do is to add a background color, add some paint streaks for interest, and then label it. So let's center this up on our canvas first. So I'm just going to select it. I've got uniform and snapping toggle down here. So I can move this until I find my center. And I know I'm going to add lettering at the bottom, so I want it to be just above center. So I'm just gonna follow this line up just a little bit. And I know that I had more space on this side than on this side, so it's automatically going to feel more left than it is centered, even though it's technically centered, but visually it's not going to feel centered. So I need to tap this over a little bit to account for that extra bit of grass on the right side. So that feels more visually centered when I look at it. All right, let's add a background color. So tap on the background color layer. I'm going to select this very first color on the top row, and then we're going to add some paint streaks behind it. So I'm going to create a brand new layer, drag it underneath the herb garden group, and we're going to switch to this light blue color. I'm going to grab the flat opaque brush. I'm going to paint in some paint streaks behind it. You can do any shape that you would like here. So I like painting multiple strokes here because I really like the painterly effect that it gives me, um, but it can be a little distracting where the actual artwork is. So where the artwork is, I'm just going to blend these a little bit. So you still see the really pretty texture around the outside, but where I'm focusing the viewer's attention, I'm going to make it nice and smooth so they pay attention to the artwork instead of these paint streaks right behind it. So I'm going to grab the smudge brush, grab the blender, I'm going to increase the size, and just push this around. Actually, I'm gonna to go to max here. And I don't have to do a bunch here, just lightly pushing the paint each way. So now I've got the focus that I want right there. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is just label it with some lettering. Let's center this a little bit. It feels a little bit too far to the left. I think that's a little bit better. Okay, I'm going to turn on the drawing guide for this so I can right in a straight line, create a brand new layer, label this one lettering. If you'd like to use typable text here, feel free to do that instead of lettering. I'm going to grab the dark blue color that's up in the middle of the top row. I'm going to switch to my font lovers brush set and grab the mono marker brush. Once again, there's a link in the video description to this. And the brush size I'm using is about 16%. Once you have your phrase all written out, scale it the way you would like it. I usually always write larger than what I need it because I can always go down, but you never want to scale up because then you'll be stretching your pixels and then things will get blurry. I'm going to turn off the drawing guide. Let's zoom out and make sure we're happy with it. I'm going to toggle my lettering up just a tad. So that's how to paint a simple gouache herb garden directly in Procreate. And once again, this was video number two out of a three-part gardening illustration series. So video number three is coming next week. If you don't wanna miss it, make sure you like this video, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon and you'll be notified as soon as that third video goes live. You can find more Procreate tutorials and freebies over on my site, every-tuesday.com. You can also find me over on Instagram. My handle is every Tuesday. If you try this out and post it there, I would love it if you tag me. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next week.